Hey guys, Chris here. You join me here in the 2019 Mini John Cooper Works and in today's video, I'm going to give you guys a tour of the Mini Connected Infotainment System along with its head-up display. So let's start with the gauge cluster that sits on top of the steering wheel column and when I say on top, I mean it actually sits on top of the steering wheel column and it actually moves with the steering wheel column when you tilt the steering wheel up and down which is very nice because it means you always have a nice view of the gauges here so you have a large speedometer here in the middle off to the left you have your rpm your tachometer and then off to the right you actually have a fuel gauge there so a very simple setup it isn't very huge it doesn't take a lot of space it's very nice and airy but the fonts are large enough and clear enough that is very easy to read and very legible and then you can see this tiny lcd screen here at the bottom which gives you your time your outside temperature gives you your fuel consumption there on the right side and also your trip computer and also your odometer so the reason they're able to give you you know very little information here is because you have more information from the head-up display here and let's let's see if we can just zoom in there switch over to manual focus and show you guys what that looks like um, so in the middle there you actually have your current speed and then you also have uh, uh, sign recognition which will give you you know your speed uh, your speed limit on the road you're driving and it will also give you navigation prompts there on the right side since we're stationary and since we're not driving it looks very simple but once you get on the move it's actually very nice and very informative and is a very nice you know supplement to the uh, the driver's display down here in the center then over to the main event of this car's infotainment system which is this central screen mini connected infotainment system it's an 8.8 .8 inch screen this is actually curved here on the sides to make it fit into this round bezel it's controlled by you know the scroll wheel the toggle wheel the turn knob down here in the center console which is a very uh, iDrive-esque of course Mini is owned by BMW so this system is heavily based on BMW's iDrive so you can you know turn the wheel to go to different menus here and when you go into the different menus you can scroll downwards and you can also press enter to go in and then you press back to go back all is fine and very well in you know iDrive style world but like the newest iteration of iDrive this is also a touch screen so you can press the screen here which is very very practical because this is a small car I'm resting my elbow here on the armrest and again I can almost touch the screen in BMW's is a reach up here so this is actually it works very nicely uh, the touch screen here but let's go through the different menus here we'll say mini connected for last so my mini you know just gives you your different vehicle settings system settings driver's profile vehicle status so on and so forth also your owner's handbook go back and then you have navigation which is just as simple and as beautiful as it is in well BMW's uh, is just very very high quality very high res you have the icons here on the left side so you can also kick the wheel here to the right and then you can do different things here route guidance traffic information additional information map views interactive maps so route guidance uh, we can choose or start route guidance we've also and also always already entered Oslo so start route guidance is very simple that's what that looks like we can also cancel here by stop route guidance and then we can press here again and we can do enter destination so let's do a quick search and let's do a QWERTY keyboard here so let's type in Bergen which is very practical there we have Bergen and then routing to Bergen so we did that with the touchscreen we can also if we enter destination with the scroll wheel and then we also do quick search we will get this setup where you turn the knob and then we can go Bergen again so when you use the touchscreen it recognizes that so it gives you that QWERTY keyboard uh, when you use the, uh, the control wheel down here well then it recognizes that also and I'm not able to spell today where do we have backspace can we do no uh, well you get you know you get you get my point here uh, let's try that again just very quickly 
Uh, this is very practical while driving to use the scroll wheel because you don't have to take your hands off the or eyes off the road. And uh, again, it takes a little longer time, especially when you're not used to it. And then you kick it to uh, the right, and then we were able to, you know, uh, you know, enter Burger instead of Bergen, but doesn't matter. And that you have a uh, map navigation there or a route navigation there. Takes a second or two. And then it zooms in. Very smooth, very nice graphics. This is one of the best, you know, navigation screens on the market today. So let's just go ahead and lastly just uh, stop route guidance. And then let's go out and let's see what else we have here. Go back, go back. Or can we just press menu? We can just press menu. And then you have media or radio, of course, here you have your digital or your broadcasting, you have your FM, you have your iPhone you can connect, you have also an, a dedicated Spotify app, which I will test and I will show you guys what that looks like in the review of this infotainment system, no, not the infotainment system, this audio system, this has the Harman Kardon upgraded audio system, I'll give you guys a tour of what Spotify looks like there or this actually isn't the Spotify app this is just what's playing on my phone which is a bit disappointing or is it let's see yes this is actually but is this Spotify app built into the car and just tethering data or is this just controlling the Spotify app on my phone it looks like it's just controlling the Spotify app on my phone so I think you will actually get Bluetooth a loss when you are connected uh, when you're playing music so but still very interesting let's go back uh, you have also USB so you have a merit of of different uh, you know sources here which is very welcome and as you can see it's very easy to use I haven't even been into this menu I haven't had this card for many days but it's still very simple to use communication that brings up your phone so your contacts recent call dial number and manage mobile devices you can also do memo memos so you can record a voice memo so if you get a brilliant idea while driving you don't want to stop to write it down you can well you can record it with your voice let's go out again and then you have notifications well that's just, is that your phone notifications i'm not quite sure and then you have mini connected lastly here so you have spotify as we said you have weather apps you have news apps and you can personalize your menu. So let's dive in here and see what that looks like. Menu assistance. Well, there weren't that many. There weren't actually that many apps here. So it's fairly simple. It's much simpler than what you get uh, in a BMW. Uh, but, well, that's welcome. I, I do like this system a lot. You can also do a split screen if I'm not mistaken. So, but can you do that? Let's see if we can just enter a destination quickly. Quick search. And just choose that. Okay. Can we do a split screen here? Well, I'm not sure. Can we? If we kick this to the right? Yes, we can. So in BMW fashion, you kick the wheel to the right and then you can do a split screen, which is very, very cool. So you can do your onboard computer, trip computer, media radio, time, minimalism, minimalism analyzer. So you can do a whole th bunch of different stuff. Um, so I would probably choose do your media radio. Uh, but then you also get a smaller screen here. So unlike the BMW iDrive system that I reviewed, which was, I think, a 10 point something or 11 point something screen, this is an 8.8 inch screen. So the navigation screen here on the left side does get a bit smallish, but it's still very, very usable. And you can also deactivate your split screen there. So there you go, guys. That was my tour of the infotainment system, the gauge cluster, and the head-up display on this, the 2019 Mini John Cooper Works. I hope I covered everything. If you have any questions, please drop me a question down below. But I tried to cover everything. There is, It's not the most complicated system, which is very welcome. I do like it a lot. I'm 
I think I might like BMW system just a bit better because it looks a bit cooler, but this is very, very nice, especially in this class of vehicle and at this price point. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye. <laughs>